So this is a confidence interval example. We are interested in the average um, amount of household savings. Okay, so uh, household savings is what we are interested in, measured in thousands of pounds. And we assume for this problem that the distribution of household savings is normally distributed with a known variance of nine. Um, so variance of nine thousand pounds, that would be a standard deviation of three thousand pounds. And we are drawing a random sample of 20. So n is equal to 20 here. And what we are interested in is this average amount of household savings in the population. In our sample of 20, we get an average value of negative 12. Okay, and negative numbers, that means that on average, households are in debt. That's a quite um, common situation, especially in a country where you would have many households which own a house. Well, in fact, they don't, most of them don't own the house outright, but the bank owns most of them and they have mortgage debt. And that's why this would be a pretty common situation. So what we now want to calculate is the 90% confidence interval for this. Not, sorry, 95% confidence interval. We know we need two things. We need to know how X bar is distributed because that will determine how we calculate our measure of sampling variability. Given the situation we have where we know the population is normally distributed and we know the variance, we know that X bar is also normally distributed with the same mean as the population, although we don't know it. And variance, the variance for X bar is going to be the variance of X divided by N. Okay, so in our case, there would be a normal distribution with mu and we have nine variance and N is 20. Okay, so that would be our variance. So to then calculate the confidence interval, that will be centered around our sample mean plus minus set alpha 2. Now set because we are having a normal distribution. So we're looking at uh, a value from the standard normal distribution alpha 2 because we want we have alpha of 5% and we're looking for the set value that cuts 2.5% in each tail of the distribution then times the standard error of x bar. So times sigma x bar. And that is, of course, so that is x bar plus minus z alpha half times the variance, the, the square root of the variance. So that will be the square root of sigma squared over n or let's write it yet an alternative form which you may see plus minus z alpha over 2 times sigma divided by square root n so in our particular example that will be x bar is going to be negative 12 on average households are in debt plus minus that value z alpha half that cuts off two and a half percent in each tail that's going to be 1.96. Uh, so that's a value which you learn by heart after a while. That's close to 2. And then uh, sigma is going to be 3 divided by the square root of 20. So that is negative 12 plus minus 1. Once you calculate that, 1 point, let me check my notes, 2, 0, 0. Three, okay, and that then leads to the following confidence interval. So we get an interval that starts at negative. The lower bound is negative thirteen point two zero three, and the upper bound is um, negative ten point seven. Nine nine seven. Okay. 
depending on how you round. Uh, if you if you calculate with more average with more numbers behind, you may get a different number at the end here. So that's our interval. So how do we interpret this interval? So we we call this the usually, although we should really say this is a ninety five percent confidence interval for mu, the unknown population um, mean. And that informal, uh, that confidence interval goes from negative 13.2 to negative 10.8 approximately. But what's this 95% mean here? It means that if we took 100 samples of this type with sample size 20, we should expect that 95% of these actually contain the unknown population mean. Whether our particular sample is one of the 95% or one of the 5% we don't know. Uh, so that's important to, to understand how this is interpreted. It's a slightly awkward interpretation of confidence intervals. And that's just the way it is. So let's have a little supplementary question here. How big should your sample be such that the measure of sampling variability, let me use a different color here, the measure of sampling variability 1.96 times the standard error of x bar. This is this term here, okay, all the red terms here, that's sort of a measure of sampling variability, and we calculate that to be 1.2, 1 1.2 approximately. So how big should your sample be such that the measure of sampling variability is smaller than one? So what we want is that 1.96, because we are talking about a 95% confidence interval, times sigma over square root n we want this to be smaller than one so now the 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 actual sigma will stay the same because we are having a known variance of nine and therefore a known standard deviation of three so the only variable in here is the n and you can see given that the n is in the denominator the larger the n, the smaller will be this value. So right now this value is 1.203 and that means you can see that if we just increase n sufficiently, that value should drop below 1. So this is what we, this is what we want. Okay, so basically we have an inequality and I should perhaps to make it, to make it clearer, I'll, for our example, this value here is 3. So it's obvious that we only have one variable in here. So let's just um, solve this. Okay, perhaps the easiest thing is to um, just multiply with square root n. So we get 1.96 times 3. I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Is smaller than square root n. Now we're going to square this. So we get one point. 9, 6 squared times 3 squared. So n got to be larger than whatever that is. Remember what that 3 is, that 3 is sigma, okay, and that 1.96 is z alpha over 2. So in general, this will be looking like this, okay. n should be larger than the square of the z value times the population variance. So in our case, when once you calculate that, what you get is, let me just turn it around, what you get is that n should be larger than 34.5744. That means you can't have a sample size of 34.5. You either have 34 or 35. Now, if you use 34, this guy would be just larger than one. So as we want it to be smaller than one, what we actually have to use here is a sample size of 35. So here you can't really round. So anyway, if you rounded this, you would also get 35, but let's say it's at 34.1, you would be rounding that to 34, but that would make the sampling vary variability not smaller than one. So you have to round this up. So here the sample size has to be at least 35 to get a measure of sampling variability smaller than one.